Now, U.S. President Donald Trump chose Saudi Arabia as the first stop of his very first overseas visit. Just days later, Riyadh fell out with neighboring Qatar over mutual accusations of supporting terrorists targeting each other. If that was not tumultuous enough, the desert stand, sands in the Middle East are about to shift dramatically yet again. Saudi Arabia has just announced its plans to go nuclear. The kingdom plans 16 power reactors by 2040, and the program will cost more than $80 billion. As part of Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman's Vision 2030, Riyadh has already contacted vendors in South Korea, France, China, Russia, Japan and the United States to consider constructing the Saudi reactors. But why does oil-rich Saudi Arabia really need nuclear energy? Well, in response to a U.S.-launched war over oil prices, the kingdom earlier this year cut its oil output to help prices stabilize above $50 per barrel. Saudi Prince Salman's Vision 2030 also envisages the sale of shares of the state-owned company Aramco to the public to finance other infrastructure projects and make the country less dependent on the black gold that has up to now been its chief source of income. But there's another reason. For all its abundance of the world's most precious commodity, domain experts predict that Saudi Arabia's oil reserves will likely dry up in about 90 years. Let's take a look at how many other countries in the Middle East either have or are developing nuclear weapons. Israel uh, stands out, of course. Uh, it has uh, no reactors so far. And in fact, uh, they're planning by 2030 they'll have some. The military is believed to possess 80 to 300 nuclear warheads. Syria has a, a civil uh, gas called reactor destroyed by Israel, but military reactors, there's no clarity whether Syria has them. Iran has one power reactor, two more under planning. The military has halted uranium enrichment work under global agreement. Future plans are unknown. UAE, of course, uh, one power plant to go operational in 2017, three more are being planned. The military, we do not know about. So what's the harm if Saudi Arabia acquires nuclear energy too? Not a lot, except that the Middle East is a volatile region. Saudi Arabia is at war uh, with Yemen. It has just broken off ties with Qatar and the Sunni kingdom has not had diplomatic relations with Shia Iran for years. With both countries supporting opposite sides in sectarian conflicts, Iran supports Syria, Yemen and Iraq. Saudi Arabia has the firm support of the United States, while Iran has the backing of Russia. Will the world keep as strict an eye on Saudi Arabia's nuclear plans as it does on Iran? U.S. President Donald Trump's administration has not taken a position on Saudi Arabia's nuclear ambitions so far, but given his lavish reception in Riyadh and the $350 billion arms deal signed between the two sides just earlier this year, one thing seems clear, that in influential Saudi Arabia's case, when the chips are down, sharply critical anti-nuke countries will simply look the other way. So why is Saudi Arabia turning towards nuclear power? The development, uh, rather developments in Iran could be one of the reasons behind this expansion. After the United States decided to decertify the Iran nuclear deal, major powers of the world are rallying behind Iran. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has been known for his aggressive stance towards Iran. After countering Tehran in Yemen, the investment in nuclear energy could be a way for the Crown Prince to ensure parity with its regional rival. Another reason for the nuclear strategy could be the decline of oil, as we've already discussed. By diversifying the nuclear sector for energy, the Royal Kingdom can ensure energy security for the country in the long term. The Crown Prince promises a more open and liberal Saudi Arabia in the coming years. A nuclear program will not only aid the reform, but also boost Saudi Arabia's diplomatic prowess around the world. And let's dwell, dwell a bit more on uh, how the matter uh, of uh, nuclear energy has been a controversial one across the world, especially in West Asia. Israel is known as the principal nuclear power in the region, but Tel Aviv has never officially denied or admitted it. In 2013, some U.S.-based experts claimed that Israel's nuclear arsenal includes 80 warheads. The country is not a member of the Non-Proliferation Treaty of Nuclear Weapons. Even inspectors from the International Atomic Energy Agency are off-limits from Israel's nuclear sites. In Iran, the nuclear program has been subject of speculation. Tehran signed the Civil Nuclear Cooperation agreement with the United States in 1957. But it's a well-known known fact that Iran was a beneficiary of the underground network run by the former head of Pakistan's nuclear program, A.Q. Khan. 
The program was a matter of concern for the United States in the 1990s. In the early 2000s, IAEA inspectors found traces of highly enriched uranium at a plant in Iran. And this led to the Iran nuclear deal in 2013, which was in the news recently after U.S. President Donald Trump decided to decertify it. The move has provoked Iran. President Hassan Rouhani has threatened, threatened to restart the manufacturing of weapons-grade uranium if the United States fails to comply with the deal.